Before we dive into today's topic, I wanna to tell you right off the top, I am not perfect at doing any of these things. So I'm not gonna stand here and preach to you that I do all this all the time, I don't, but I'm challenging myself to be even better at it now. And I'm challenging you to stand up and do the same thing, be better at this. And that is using less and wasting less. Here is why, and there are lots of reasons, but we'll start off with single use. There are so many items that are out there that are single use, and when we're done using them, we toss them. Perfect example, the straw. We, we've all heard about the straw lately, but there are lots of items like the straw that we could very easily not use. We could find an alternative for it. It's just a matter of us deciding to do that. The second thing is this whole idea of reducing, reusing, and recycling. The whole reason why this has an order, reduce, reuse, recycle, is because the first thing we're supposed to do is actually reduce. Reduce the amount of stuff that we're using and buying and consuming and throwing out so that it stays out of the landfill. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 ways that you can reduce waste in your life. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you're into the neon trend this spring. There are lots of foods that come in packages. We have nothing we can do about that. But there are many foods that you could choose to buy unpackaged and bring your own packages to the store. For example, produce. I don't see why you have to buy a banana in a clamshell case. You can just buy a banana as is, or you can buy other fruits and vegetables as is. If you wanna put them in produce bags, you can get reusable mesh and washable produce bags. I'll link my favorite ones for you down below. And if you wanna buy food that comes in bulk, you can bring your own containers to stores. They will measure them and then you can go ahead and fill them up. This is becoming increasingly popular. I know in Toronto, there's actually a store that you can go to that is completely waste-free. You just bring your own stuff and leave with your own containers filled up. I hope to see a lot more of this. Ordering food in or taking food out is so common and it's something we all do. When you finish eating, look at the amount of waste that has been generated from that one meal. You usually have stacked up containers, condiment wrappers, and plastic cutlery, paper napkins, that kind of stuff. At the very least, because I know sometimes you can't avoid ordering takeout, at least, at least, at least, ask them not to give you any packed up condiments that you definitely have in your fridge or any plastic cutlery that you for sure have at home. In the fall, I met these two girls out of British Columbia who were creating their own beautiful line of traditional metal safety razors. I was terrified of this concept, but I ended up getting one. And ever since then, I have not touched a disposable razor. Once I got used to the transition and I understood how to use these safety razors as they're called, first of all, you get a better shave. And second of all, the blades are recyclable. You wash, you wrap them properly. You rinse them, wrap them properly. They're very inexpensive to maintain. The blades are generally less than a dollar. And I have not had to throw out one piece of plastic since making that transition. There are several popular ways of selling milk, either in milk jugs, milk bags, which is what we get here in Canada, as well as milk cartons. The problem with all of those, they end up in some way, shape or form in recycling and then in a landfill. A really sustainable way to get your milk is what they used to do back in the olden days, which is use glass milk jugs. I've done this before. It's pretty straightforward to do. You pick up your milk jug, you have to put a deposit down for the glass bottle, you use it, you give it a rinse, and the next time you go back to the grocery store, you simply bring it back and you get your deposit back or you just leave your deposit there and use it for the next bottle that you purchase. When food is served at my house, we don't grab paper napkins anymore. We get our cloth napkins. We've probably had these now for three plus years. Do they look incredibly gorgeous? Listen, I wouldn't put them on display at the Four Seasons Hotel, but you know what? They work perfectly well for wiping up greasy barbecue and chicken grease from our mouth and hands and fingers. And when we're done with them, we just throw them in the wash with our cleaning cloths and stick them back in a drawer. This has saved so many napkins from going into the landfill. It is such an easy thing to do. These were super inexpensive and at this point, I don't understand why disposable would be an option over using something like a simple and very efficient and convenient cloth napkin. 
looking at our soap and detergent bottles, there are definite ways that we can reduce the amount of stuff that we are throwing away. Again, whether it's in the garbage or recycling. So oftentimes you can buy refills in plastic bags that you can then use to refill plastic bottles. And while you might think, well, the product is still coming in a plastic bag, listen, that plastic bag might give you five refills for that one spray bottle, instead of you having to buy five more spray bottles leading to six spray bottles, instead of one spray bottle and then a bag with five doses of product in it. Another thing you can look at doing is picking up concentrates, which is a great way to say add a capful to a spray bottle filled with water, and perhaps that one bottle contains 60 capfuls, so therefore you are getting a lot more bang for your buck and you're having to throw out less. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to do here. And even when you're making your own product, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy new spray bottles. Why not reuse really good quality spray bottles that you have from store-bought products, give them a good rinse, and then make your own products. Just make sure, of course, that you're labeling everything properly. Between having a baby and having a bunch of musical toys and filming in our house, because every time we film, we're using battery-powered mic packs and cameras and that kind of stuff, we are big, big fans of reusable batteries because if we weren't, we'd be chucking batteries all the time. That's why getting reusable batteries makes the most sense. We have battery chargers, we plug them in, we pop our reusable batteries in there, they charge up, and we just use them the next time. It is more cost effective, frankly, and it is much better for the environment. Well, it might sound obvious, replacing coffee cups, which by the way, you think are recyclable, but actually aren't recyclable, and water bottles or other beverage containers with a simple stainless steel mug or water bottle can save so much plastic and paper waste. I carry my water bottle around. If you see me on the street, there's a really good chance you'll see me with my water bottle. I fill it up probably three times a day, hot water, cold water, and if I wanna have another beverage, I will use a different container so that I don't taint the flavor of this one. That's a great tip if you're concerned about, oh, but my you know, thermos will always taste like coffee if I use it for coffee, great, have one coffee thermos. The point is, you're not wasting a paper cup every day. The point is, you're not buying plastic bottles anymore. Family events can be very overwhelming. Whenever we go to family events, whether it's on my side or Chad's side, here's typically what happens. The host has been working on putting this party together all day. They're tired, they wanna hang out with their family. So at the end, everything's getting set up and out comes the plastic cutlery, the paper plates, the napkins, all the stuff that eventually ends up in a big garbage bag stuck in the garage and waiting for garbage day. Chan and I have decided that this year we are gonna do things differently. We are not gonna be that paper plate plastic cup family. We're going to invest in some bamboo and or agave plates and cups that we can use to host, host family and friends. We have a big backyard, we want people to come over, but we don't wanna be wasting things with paper and plastic. When it comes to cleaning tools, one of the biggest changes that we can make, as far as I'm concerned, is switching out our cleaning tools that are disposable or one use to cleaning tools that have multiple uses in them. Best example I can think of is microfiber cloths. The reason I love them so much is because every time I use a microfiber cloth, I can use it several times before I have to launder it. I know it's not going to smell, I know it's absorbent, I know it's gonna get rid of streaks and marks. It basically knocks everything off of my cleaning checklist, and when I'm done using it, I don't throw it in the garbage. Whereas a disposable rag or duster or a paper towel, those things all end up in the garbage, all end up in the landfill. Microfiber cloths you can reuse so many times and if you look at it in aggregate and you think about how many people are using disposable wipes and this and that and throwing it in the garbage, think about how much a microfiber cloth can save you. There are many things that we can't control. We know that, but there are lots of things that we can. There are things that we can do to reduce the amount of waste that us as individuals and families and small businesses are generating. These are small little decisions that we can make each and every day. And my goal is by showing you these 10 things, it'll start to change the way that you think about your purchase decisions. And even if it keeps one extra thing out of the garbage each week, I feel like I've done my job. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, 
What would you tell a company you would like to see them do to help you make better decisions? Or what companies do you feel are helping consumers make better decisions and wasting less or keeping waste out of landfills? Let me give you a couple of examples. I would love to say to my laundry detergent company, hey, why don't you have a big drum at my grocery store and let me pay for a token where I can bring my laundry jug, which is perfectly good when it's empty and just refill it instead of me having to throw that plastic thing out and buy a whole new plastic one that is just going to have to get thrown out again. That's my first question example. My second question example would be, you know, a company that's making policy changes to help nudge us to make better decisions and waste less would be something like Starbucks that gives you a small incentive every time you bring in your own container and say, hey, can you put my coffee in here instead of using a paper cup? They'll give you a little discount. Or a company like H&M where they will give you a discount if you bring in a bag of clothes that they will then recycle and repurpose safer than what you would do if you were to just chuck your clothes in the landfill. So let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, aside from talking about waste diversion strategies, you can follow us on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us are at Clean My Space. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love, and if you wanna learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video, and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.